This is Dr. Andrew Jones. In this edition of NRA Secrets, I'm going to answer the question, my dog is lame. What leg and what joint is affected? You're going to learn how to do a proper lameness exam. So I'm actually going to show you my dog, Louis, who actually is lame. So it's a great opportunity for you to see exactly how to do a proper lameness exam if your dog is lame at home. And you can actually figure out then exactly what area, what leg is affected and what joint is affected. Before that though, I mean, I have many viewers um, ask questions such as, Dr. Jones, what do you do with your time? Like, what do you do? Yes, I make YouTube videos. Obviously, you know that you're watching this video. Um, and yeah, sometimes I do sort of go down the wormhole of YouTube and get distracted with other videos. I just want to show you this great video I've been watching. This video is about a cat meeting puppies for the very first time. See, those are, they're so cute. See, that's awesome. So the first thing is watching your dog walk around. It may be obvious they're holding up one leg, so clearly that's the affected leg. But in many other cases, it's not. You just see them stiff getting up. You can tell they're favoring something, but you're not really sure as far as which leg is affected. And one of the big veterinary terms to watch for, I mean, this was more applicable um, for horses, but for any animals, is when they're watching, they'll often drop down. And the, the term to remember is they go down on the sound leg. So typically, they might drop on their right front, which means they're actually putting more weight in that right front leg so they can take the weight off the left front leg because that's the one that they're painful on. So Lewis here is lame on his right rear leg. Let's see if we can watch him walk and you can have a better sense of me describing this down on sound leg. Lewis, come. Mm, it was rather brief there and I think if you're able to see it, what he was doing is when he's walking towards us, he's actually quickly picking in a sort of faster rhythm, picking up that right rear and opposed to the left rear. And uh, even right there, he's wagging his tail because he wants more treats. But I think even just at, at rest there, uh, here come on, Lewis. Watch him at rest, you can even see him, he's putting more weight, more heavily weight on the left side versus the right side. And if I can, if I think you guys can see, yeah, even there, you can see him there where he's just putting most of that weight on the left rear, kind of just sort of toe touching on that right rear. So that's obvious. Then obviously it is his you know, right rear leg that's affected. So the next part of the layman's exam is starting obviously on whichever leg from your initial assessment looks like is the one that's going to be affected. For with Lewis, we're looking at his right rear leg, but then starting distally. So starting at the end of the leg, working your way up to the, to the biggest joint. So with Lewis, we're gonna start with his toes, work our way all the way up to his hip joint, um, systematically examining that entire leg, and then from there determining which joint is affected. So I want you to start first, if we think it's your dog's right rear leg, we're gonna start with the toes. You know, I want you to feel every digit, see if there's one that feels painful at all, bend every one, you know, does he respond or not, does he pull his leg back? I want you to look in between the webbing. Is there something like a pustule? You know, do we have an infection in there? Do we have a form by like a grass on? Look at your dog's pads too. So are they cut or infected in some way? Look in between the pads underneath the foot. So I want you to be quite systematic. Look in all parts of that. And then bend everyone. You know, is he, is he painful or uncomfortable? And then go a little bit higher. I want you to squeeze the joint above. Okay, as you bend his entire foot, is that painful or not? No, he seems to be okay. Feeling side to side, putting in moderate pressure. So you're systematically working your way up the joint. Then we're next, we're gonna get up to his 
here his hawk, or his tarsus. And I want you to feel that joint thoroughly, bending it back and forth. Is that painful or not? Feeling what's attached to the back of the hawk. Feeling this big tendon, this big gastroc tendon. Sometimes it can be pulled or strained. Think of Achilles injuries. Common in soccer players. I play on a soccer team and God, I think every second week someone seems to injure their Achilles. So feel that big tendon. Is that painful or not? Working your way up. Then after we leave the hawk joint, the tarsus, the next joint above, I want you to feel the bones as you're going up. So feel along here. Feel the tibia. Feel the little bone at the back, maybe the fibula. And then the next joint above that, just so you're feeling those bones, squeezing them, feeling any soft tissue swellings or pain, any area of pain. Then the next big bone above that is the knee. So when we're looking at the rear leg, probably the most common joint that I find affected, found affected in veterinary practice was the knee. The next most common is going to be the hip joint. Then after that, when we're dealing with the front leg, it's pretty close between the elbow and the shoulder. So you really want to pay good attention to the knee especially. We're looking at this whole huge number of dogs getting ACL injuries. So first, just supporting your dog's leg, you know, one hand underneath the knee, moving it back and forth. Do you feel any crunching or crepitus? Feels I can actually feel a little bit of that in Lewis, and he's even a little bit uncomfortable moving it back and forth. In feeling that joint, I compare the right one to the left one. This joint is actually thickened and slightly enlarged when I compare, compared it to his left knee. So what's that telling me? He's got a thing called the medial buttress. So that's where his body's way of building up scar tissue to try to support that knee joint. So that's very common when we see a dog that's had a partial or complete um, anterior cruciate ligament tear and that's their body's way of trying to stabilizing that knee. Okay and so I'm feeling a bit of crunching or crepitus to pickle up arthritis within that joint itself. The knee is a bit thickened. The next thing I'm just going to do is just do that one little test. It's called a drawer sign. We're trying to see if there's cranial motion of, the, of this bone, so that's the tibia fibula, in relation to the femur. And the ligament itself, that ACL ligament, is supposed to, the way it works, it's going to supposed to prevent cranial motion. So when I'm moving Lewis's joint, uh, he's slightly uncomfortable. Maybe he's got a slight ACL tear. I don't feel a lot of movement, so his body is building up. And his, what his body is doing is you know, slowly trying to stabilize that joint. The other big test uh, for an ACL injury, it's called a tibial compression test, and that's when you extend this. Oh, good boy, Louis, you're going to extend that leg straight out. Good boy. So you're holding on to the knee here and putting his leg straight, quite straight. And if he's feeling uncomfortable, oh, that's a bit sore. But that's compressing. So what that's doing, that's compressing the menisci. Uh, and that's a bit uh, uncomfortable. So he's probably got a slight meniscal injury. So that, based on all those clinical signs of having a thickened, medi this medial buttress, um, the knee, I'm feeling a bit of crepitus in the knee, and it feels like a little bit of laxity with the ACL ligament when I'm testing the drawer sign, and a positive tibial compression test means he's probably got a partial tear of his ACL. But based on his age, and the fact he's still walking pretty well on these, on these legs, and I'm supporting him primarily with my supplement, it's a mat pressure. Uh, I'm not going to be looking at doing surgery. So you've examined the knee. I want you to then move further up the leg. I'm going to feel this big bone, the femur. Are there any lumps or bumps, swellings in it? Does it feel painful at all? You can feel some of the big muscles, the big quad muscles behind it. Are they painful in any way, any type of swelling? And then we're going up that femur, and then we're right up here to the hip joint. Uh, so here's the greater trochanter, that big point of the hip. And the first big thing is just sort of gently, I want you to gently extend your dog's hip. See, is that sore? So if we've got a dog that hasn't had any degree of hip dysplasia, any hip arthritis, we should be able to fully extend and almost get it straight back. He's a little bit uncomfortable there too. 
Uh, yeah, so he might have a little bit of hip arthritis too. Moderate amount of hip dysplasia, which is all wouldn't be unexpected based on his age. He's 12 and a half. So then you fully, you're sort of gone through that range of motion, extending, flexing that hip joint while you're supporting the knee. Feeling with your fingers, do you feel any crunching or crepitus, the sign of arthritis? So when the crunching is just bone crunching with bone within the joint itself. All right, Lewis. So that's a pretty thorough exam of his rear leg. If you're going to examine your dog's front leg, you're doing much the same thing. You're going to start out with the toes here. We're looking at your toes. You want to bend every digit. Yeah, and I want the same thing. Looking in between the toes themselves, flipping your dog's foot over, looking in between the pad, looking at the pads themselves, looking in between the pads. Is anything there affected? And you're going to squeeze the paw too. I want you to squeeze, palpate, move everything around, being really thorough, you know, looking for foreign bodies. Yeah, and then when you feel his metacarpus here. So there's a whole numbers of bones that run through here. That's sort of the continuation of his wrist. And then I want you to feel his wrist here. That's his, also called his carpus. So palpate it here. Flex and extend that. Is that uncomfortable or not? Does it feel swollen? Then just systematically work your way up the leg. So I'm feeling here. Uh, feel his radius runs along here. The ulna just underneath. Feel the muscle bellies, the tendons. I go on top of that, top of these bones. Then working your way up and then really focus on these next two joints. You're focusing on the elbow joint here. So just palpate either side of the elbow joint, you know, and just supporting it, extending and flexing it. We should almost be able to extend straight out, as you can do here with Lewis, and bend it straight up. And that's often how, how in veterinary practice clients would come in. They know their dog is sore, they've done a bit of an exam, but you've got to really sometimes extend it fully, flex it fully, to really see going through that range of motion that that joint is actually sore and then work your way up so up along this big bone the humerus because then we're going right up to your dog's shoulder joint too which runs in here we've got that the top of the humerus articulating with this big bone their collarbone or their scapula and so same thing just holding on to the elbow i want you to extend flex and extend the this shoulder joint too and often too, it's similar in that you really need to you extend them straight out. You really need to flex it up high and tight before you're gonna elicit any type of uncom uncomfortable lettuce or pain to actually get the diagnoses. Thank you, Lewis. Well, your front leg looks great and you're very happy with that. The back leg on the other hand, you've got yourself a little ACL tear that will just supportively treat. So thank you, so that's how I would go about in practice, always very systemically, first watching, taking a good history, watching your dog walk first, preferably getting a pretty good idea from watching them walk which leg is affected, but then going through from the toes all the way up to the big joint, be it the shoulder or be it the hip joint. Oh. Okay, so <laughs> thank you for watching this edition of Venery Secrets. I don't know if you just watched me walk there. God, I feel like I'm the one who's going to need a layman's exam in part from playing soccer last night. And yes, I'm in my late 40s too, so I'm getting joint wear and tear and aging and things don't sort of bounce back the way they once did. If you have yet to do so, I want you to subscribe to my channel by go ahead and clicking that link in the box above. And after you do that, you can click that link in the box below and I can send you my free books and videos on how to heal your dogs at home with my top natural remedies.